everybody. Um, sorry for being late and sorry for not having charts. Um, it's a little uh, embarrassing, but I don't know. Uh, sometimes these things don't work out. Uh, I, I wanted to like give you my um, keynote um, anyways, and I want to like let you know what I what I what we at OMR uh, see uh, currently on the web and what we see is um, as interesting um, uh, beyond the, the obvious, beyond the, the Corona stuff. Um, maybe uh, um, a couple ideas. I there's, my colleague is still trying to like get the charts going, um, but I think that that, that ship has sailed now. Um, so let me just uh, tell you like like this um, what I think is interesting. Um, first of all, obviously we have all noticed that um, Corona has affected almost everybody, but not the tech companies and. And we've asked ourselves, why is that? Why is tech so strong? And why is Amazon still growing? And why is Apple still growing? And there's just a couple of fun facts to, to kick off the presentation. Um, the funniest fact, I thought, and I don't, uh, is, is, the, is the growth of Amazon in Germany, I think, the, is, is rooted in Amazon Prime. Amazon Prime is obviously the driver um, for, for, for all, all other Amazon B2C entities. And um, we, we noticed recently that um, there's more Amazon Prime members uh, in Germany now than there's members of the Protestant Church. So that's, that's I mean, for a country like ours, I think it's the, the number is 25 million um, Amazon Prime members. It sounds insanely high, um, but that's what we, our research found. And that is more than, than there's people that, that are actually member of the Protestant Church. Um, and I mean, if you, if you look at these numbers, maybe... Um, you understand or you, you you get a better feeling for for the dynamics and for the for the impact that the, the company has um another fun fact is is apple um we, we try to like come up with a statistic that's really impactful and really telling and the statistics i like the best is um the the amazon i uh, saw so, sorry the the apple um earpods um there's the the revenue that they do with earpods is the this is, is um, eight billion euros only with earpods eight billion that's almost the um, revenue that's equivalent to, to red bull to puma and um some some uh, music brands combined so it's it's that that's that's how huge the the earpod business is and if you then look at um the business they do with lost earpods only that's um, 700 million that's that they're making um, annually with only the the lost earpods um, and the 700 million that's equal um, uh, roughly to the revenue that Bayern Munich the the the, the soccer team has um, so um, amazing numbers only the lost earpods uh, provide like 700 million in extra revenue for for Apple so so there's a reason why these companies are so so so, so huge and so um, um, high, highly valued um, that, that leads us to the next question. The next question is, uh, what can you do then here? What you, can you do sitting in a startup, sitting in a, in a German digital company, in a European digital company, um, uh, and, and, and how, to, how to fight and how to maneuver in this situation? And one thing um, um, I liked recently is um, uh, an idea that's, that, that we call the, the consumer-led revolution. And that is, um, as a company and as a brand, um, you might want to, anticipate what society wants and even like front run all the politicians not, not, not wait for regulation but try to to um, anticipate what's coming and then be the first to implement that and be the first to like really um, um, jump on that wave I'll give you a couple of examples the, the example I, I like best recently is you can basically see there's something that I would call um, petition marketing companies are starting petitions um, in order to like bring certain ideas into the German parliament, you have to have 50,000 signatures. And that whole story is like now happening all over the place. Companies, the first company to do that was Oatly, um, the, 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 the milk company that's not like producing milk, but you know, it's soy milk, um, company Oatly, a huge su success story. And their claim to fame or their, their, their recent marketing stunt that's really pushed them quite a bit was, um, uh, starting a petition, actually asking people to um, to sign a petition to 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 start change and and, and ask Parliament um, to to approve or like to actually like um, uh, engage in a topic, and that is all involved. That all is, is like baked into their marketing strategy. 
So, so that's, that's totally recently, um, we, we, I came across, um, the smoothie brand Innocent, same thing. The, they, they started a petition. Um, I think their goal was to, um, have the parliament, um, approve an, a new bill that all kinds of, um, plastic, um, or that all kinds of foods have to, um, show the, this is the CO2 impact on, um, on somewhere on the product. So, so that's what they were asking. They want to like force everybody to have to, um, uh, print their CO2 impact on the product. Um, and that's was their claim and their story. And, you know, the, the innocent idea, their product was baked into that uh, petition. So you see all kinds of people trying to, um, to, to, to gain attention through actually try, trying to, to start political change. And that's, Something I've never seen before, um, where you really like use your brand and, and, and try to like use your company, use your marketing money um, to to actually um, in, in, in impact politics and, and get people behind you and and, 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 and and fight for attention. And you can have that on the on the on the big level, and you can have that on the small level. My my favorite example is a. As a, as a supermarket here close to Hamburg, um, they did the same thing. They, they anticipated that people don't like fireworks anymore. People have, grew more and more skeptical of fireworks, like shooting, um, or like buying all this, this stuff and then polluting the air, um, on, 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 uh, at the end of the year and shooting fireworks in the sky. That was something that people were like very skeptical of. Um, um and, it, and you know, you have like, I don't know, 10 beers and then you shoot fireworks around it just doesn't feel right the whole pollution everything doesn't feel right um in in today's um day and age and so um the the, the supermarket decided okay we don't we just don't sell fireworks anymore even though it's 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 okay it's there's it's, it's not um legally forbidden there's no regulation yet um, but it all feels wrong and so they decided that's a, that's a very, um, uh, standard Edeka supermarket. They decided no more fireworks, um, at, at our place. And what they received was a huge candy storm. And people like actually like really loved the decision and showed them a lot of support, a lot of, um, um, yeah, a lot of love for, for like front running a decision that's, that's, that's overdue. Um, from from the political side, and I think that's like a huge opportunity for 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 brands, for D 2 C brands, for all these um, new companies that 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 are like fighting hard for attention. I think, um, and I mean, it, it's obviously it's it's uh, you have to like want that, but that's what's happening. People use politics um, to gain attention and to have to create an impact, and I think. Um, looking at the the next generations that, that are like growing up, um, it's 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 happening more and more, and it's a it's a new um, thing to do if you want. Um, or at least it's a new maybe. It's at some point, if everybody's doing it, it's probably then. Um, uh, it's, it's at some point it's too much, but right now there's a window where you can, I think, with the right um, political idea um, behind it, actually leverage your brand. Um, and, and I'm not saying I, I, I really uh, suggest for everybody to do that, but I find it interesting that this is happening. Um, the, the second thing that I really think is interesting these days um, is, is review marketing. It's a whole new topic, but I think if you want to like start your, your business now, if you want to grow and uh, like try to find a way to like get around Facebook and Google and, and spending heavily on these platforms, I think reviews is something that you definitely need to manage and that I, that I really observe closely. Um, and I am, I, I, you know, t today's, um, environment, we review everything. And the, the, la the latest thing I noticed is, um, I, I, I left a, a restroom at a, um, at an autobahn, um, uh, restaurant and I had to like rate the restroom and, and you have to obviously rate everything. Like now it's, it's, it's all the way to restrooms and before it was like hotels and doctors and employers and rating and, and reviewing stuff is everywhere. And I think that really like opens up new possibilities, um, for brands, for, for smart and, 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 and first moving marketeers. And, um, the one company that I think is, is doing that really well is, is N26. Obviously, they're doing a couple of things right. I mean, they, you know, valued at a couple uh, billion uh, euros. So, so they, they must be doing something right. And um, among the many things they're doing right is, is the way they manage their reviews. Um, historically, it's always been on review platforms, on Trustpilot, on Google, banks, 
always really got slapped in the face. They had the worst reviews, uh, like one-star reviews all over the place, maybe two-star reviews, but banks never had a good showing um, on a review platform. And then the direct bank banks came in and they did a slightly better job. But the whole game changed when um, the neo banks or like the, the, the N26 of this world like changed the game. And what they did, and it's, it's a very, very simple process, but you have to do it, is they um, looked at the NPS scores of their users and they invited the happy users, the, the ones that are actually like uh, liking what N26 offers, they invited them to, to, to leave a review on all these review platforms and, and pushing and inviting, incentivizing, um, happy customers to go to review platforms was, had a huge impact. Um, the banks, the classic, the traditional banks simply left um, this door open. In the past, they didn't pay attention. So what happened is only, um, the disappointed customers, only the ones that really like complained, um, uh, Left their, left their reviews and that led to all these crappy reviews. And now uh, you, all you have to do is engage the happy ones and like motivate the happy ones to also show their support on those review platforms. And that worked out really well. Um, and, and, and leveraged, um, N26 quite a bit. And if you look across the review sites, it, I mean, and reviews are obviously quite important for banks, right? I mean, if you want to, before you open an account, you want to know who you're, who you're working with. So, so they did that really well. Um, another way to play reviews is um, what Germany's biggest or like Europe's biggest um, uh, um, uh, e-commerce place for music instruments, a company called Thoman. What they do is they really use reviews as their content. They take the whole Amazon reviews to a whole next level. Uh, why we all look at Amazon ratings and Amazon comments and here and there, I think people... Um, leave Amazon comments, but mostly they are crappy reviews, like just emojis or like, I don't know, very short and very, um, not very helpful reviews. Um, and Toman said, okay, look, reviews are the core of our business. That's what we consider content. Um, and if you look to, to, to Toman, there's, there's no real, um, argument why such a company should exist selling music instruments today that should be amazon's job that should maybe be media mark as a tuan's job but there's no logical reason why a company such as toman with one billion in revenue should exist just as you know all in, in theory it wouldn't make sense for such a company to be that big but they they you know they they they, they bent the rules they broke the rules and they have found a way to exist and to grow and, and to, 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 you know, fight against Amazon. And I think uh, there's the secret sauce behind that is, is reviews and the way they incentivize reviews, the way they curate the reviews and, and the whole, the way they, they editorially use those reviews. If you want to buy a music instrument online, um, you go to Toman because you get the best feedback. You get the best impression of what you buy. You, you, you trust the people that you, um, read from, you trust the source and you want to like, um, reward the place with your purchase. Um, and it's, it's, it's basically a content business with an e-commerce and, and music instrument sales house, um, uh, attached to it. But in the, that, that's, I think the whole magic is, is to, to be so strong in, in, in the content field and the reviews field. It's not, the, the editors that do the job, but it's the actual uh, buyers and shoppers that know about the instruments that are doing the job. And you see reviews that are actually coming in two years after somebody has purchased an instrument um, and, and really like long, long like this. I mean, really like scroll down, scroll down, but deep, helpful knowledge before you actually want to make a, make a high impact purchase. I mean, music instruments are not the cheapest of products. So, um, so that's, uh, um, it was a big learning for me. Um, and, and it was one of the reasons why we recently um, started a whole new business here at OMR um, where we review business to business software. Um, but that's another story. And um, the last, last point I want to make on, on reviews is, um, that we recently saw Facebook ads, um, for necklaces, for jewelry, very simple jewelry, uh, Facebook ads. And what you could see, is that if you like put out a regular ad and, and run a Facebook campaign with like an ad that says like the nice looking jewelry or like a picture of the, of the, of the necklace, that's fine. But if you want to really improve the click rate, if you want to improve the conversion rate, 
what you need to do is you need to copy um, a positive Amazon review into your ad creative. Um, that really changed the game. Um, you, including those five stars, we just copied those five stars and a true review and, and run this, 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 this campaign. And what you see is the click rate is, 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 is increasing, the conversion rate is increasing only by changing the creative and adding stars and a positive review to the creative itself. And so that's how you can, I mean, in my mind, uh, currently a hack, uh, Facebook campaigns at least a little bit um, by just copying positive reviews into the, into the, in the ad creative. Um, next topic, we talked about um, the consumer-led revolution and, 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 and jumping on petitions. We talked about uh, reviews. Um, let's talk about um, messenger marketing a little bit. Uh, I want to show you some screenshots um, of what's happening in the world today. If, if you look at yourself, like you go somewhere or you see something interesting, most people don't post on Facebook any longer. Huh? Most people like post into WhatsApp groups. That's, I think, is, is, is standard behavior now. You go to a, I mean, these days you go to very few places uh, thanks to Corona, but if you see something that you like, you don't um, usually post it to Facebook, you post it to your several WhatsApp groups. And that changes the whole dynamic. It makes people like spend even more time in WhatsApp um, it's very difficult for, for brand advertisers to control the message because the message is not publicly um, visible anymore. And we call this whole development of people like basically living, posting, chatting, discussing, expressing themselves in, in messenger apps. We call that dark social. And this dark social requires one thing. It requires um, digital companies or e-commerce companies or all kinds of companies basically to connect directly with the messaging app. And we saw very strong examples of how um, nail shops, where you get, you get your nails made, um, where you saw like all kinds of small businesses directly connecting and um, signing appointments, uh, like chatting with customers in your mail app or your messenger app. Um, and I think that's something that you really need to look at. How close are you to the messenger app? How ready are you for like a B2B and B2C communication through WhatsApp or through Instagram or through messenger apps. Um, the, the, the fun fact or the funny example I saw recently, somebody sent that to me. I don't fly private planes, um, but I saw like a company that's um, selling uh, uh, seats on a private plane also through B2B. They're basically through, uh, through WhatsApp. They're basically doing all their business um, on WhatsApp. Um, the, the conversion they have on a private plane booking is 25% better. Um, the whole marketing department basically consists of WhatsApp um, communication and people that are, that are um, um, managing the app. So that's really like, I think that's the first, that's the, that's the, that's the, that's the, that's the, the, the front of what's happening. And it's going to be small business and business with very high baskets or like very valuable baskets that start this race. But it will trickle down, and in a in a couple of months, or at least in a year or two, like it will be a requirement for all kinds of business to be completely WhatsApp ready, be completely connected um, to messenger apps, and especially like be serviceable on these apps. We have a friend um, who recently had his blinds, his sun blinds. Um, there's a an engine that makes the sun blind go out, and this engine broke down, and so he was like, "Oh, where do I get a new engine for a sun blind?" That's a very like very unusual use case. And he, he, he um, looked on the internet and there was a company that he could actually text with and like send pictures back and forth. And immediately they would send him the right engine for his sun blind uh, system at his house. So very um, strange use cases are uh, like uh, are, are growing up now or like are, are being um, uh, are happening now. But um, this is going to uh, like influence the whole market and that's just going to be the standard. Um, we see the, the first um, pioneers of this all over the place. As I said, nail studios, uh, private planes, um, uh, and, 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 and household technology. Um, okay, um, what else do we have? This is, um, we, had, we had reviews, we had a connection to, to messenger apps, um, we had uh, the, the consumer-led revolution, um, let me see. I'm, I'm going to take a look at my charts that are not visible to you. Uh, um, and let me see what I, what I forgot. Uh, one second. Messenger apps, um, reviews. 
Was ist das Letzte, was ich erzählen wollte? Kannst du mal kurz den Schatz angucken? Well, give me one second. I'm gonna have to check the latest topic. Uh, Philip, if, yeah. if it's okay, we can also otherwise start with questions beforehand. Is there questions? Is there questions before I? Uh, yeah. yeah, yeah, actually, uh, quite many. So, one question regarding the petition campaigns. Yeah. Um, do you know the KPIs or results of them, and how do they actually work? Um, I mean, it's very tricky. You, it's, it's obviously not performance marketing, right? I mean, that's that's the, the first. Uh, uh, <laughs> that's very obvious um, that, that you can't like really like set up a budget and then look at clicks. But the way it goes is basically, I mean, at least that's what I observed at the, uh, from the Oatly and from the innocent um, examples, is you look at a political topic that's very close to your philosophy, it's very close to your product and very close to what, what you try to like do with your product. And then you, and, and then you see that there's social, um, how do you say that, social uh, sensibility for this awareness for this for this certain topic and then you leverage your brand and your communication power and and, and call people to sign a petition and in this whole process of, of you leveraging your message you jumping onto a, um, such a topic uh, and then signing or like, uh, like booking billboards um, and, and communicating um, on, on classical advertising or like on digital advertising this particular message creates so much PR awareness, so much press uh, and, and, and general media awareness that it really like um, like leverages your brand or like, like drives so much attention to you that you can never buy with the performance ads. Um, I, I, I can't tell you exactly the KPIs and the, the ROI on, on, the, on such a campaign, but I mean, if you look at the example of Oatly, it's just crazy how... I mean, it's 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 it's, it's purely purely visible um, without knowing any numbers. I can promise you that what they did really helped them quite a bit, and the same is true for for Innocent. Um, it, it's it's it, you, they are the first ones, right? So it, it's a short window, and if you like try this in two years, everybody will be deaf and bored and be like, okay, like leave me alone with your next political campaign that's basically meant to push a product. And obviously that's like from a moral standpoint, that's a very like narrow path, right? You want to like not like use your political message only to leverage your brand. It's, it's a very like delicate, um, uh, delicate environment. But I think um, just to just look at the case study and then Google it a little bit around Oatly, around Innocent, and you'll see how they set it up and how they found um, a cause that was so important to them and so close to, to their brand and to their product um, that, it, that it worked for them and it actually worked. I mean, they found 50,000 people to sign the petition. Now the parliament is engaging um, and Oatly is all over the place. Yeah, yeah. I think it's also very, um, very valid to say that um, those kind of campaigns are basically not, well, they're, they're not trackable in a sense uh, as you would do it as a performance marketer. And uh, very much goes above, um, like even beyond uh, branding, I think. Okay, then next question is from Philip um, CMO at Project A. Uh, congrats on the launch of OMR reviews. I wonder if Germany is a big enough market for a platform like this. Obviously, the OMR brand is very much uh, German focused for now, but why not build the platform in English for future scalability? Um, it's a very, very like individual question to, to OMR. And I think, um, for, for us, the most important was to like actually capture the German market. And what we see is that the German market is basically big enough for, for all kinds of B2B communication business, for events, for podcasts, um, and, uh, you know, for, for all the stuff that we do. And so we, we, we are thinking reviews as a German business uh, for now. Um, because I think what, what you notice is, German people like German language and German native uh, presentation. Um, it's really tough here to build 
a, a true community of G basically Germans uh, based on English language. Um, I notice with my podcast, every time I have an English speaking guest on, 20% less listening. Um, I, know, we, I notice that like it's, it's one edge that we have compared to other event organizers. Our communication is mostly in German. We have this whole, this, this very healthy and really true community aspect. People like, like actually like see us as, as some, as a, as a friend, as a, as a very close a partner. And you can, at least today, in my mind, you can't really have that when speaking English. It's, it's, everybody understands you and it's completely acceptable, obviously, but you don't have the, quite the same connection and quite the same openness and willingness to connect. Um, it's just, I, I, I'm not making this up. I really, it's, it's just what we learned over the past years. And so we decided the market definitely is big enough. There's so many German companies that need software that are very attractive targets for, for software. Um, vendors of all types. Um, so our, our natural approach is, is German speaking and building the community in Germany first. And if we have this standing, if we have established this whole business, then obviously we take a look at the market and we, when we wonder, is this, um, um, is this something that we can like expand to other countries? Um, but for now, also from a, from a search, um, SEO standpoint, most German software buyers, they Google, in German, you have to like have the German keywords. There's so many little aspects as well. And, and the whole software review business is very search driven. So you need to be available or like you need to have the German keywords um, implemented and all this very much speaks um, for starting this in, in German first. And then uh, like taking a look at the market and, and, and just making decision on, on internationalization. And um, once we have this market like behind us. Okay, um, thank you. Before we move on to the next question, uh, to the audience, if you want, you can also obviously grab the mic um, and ask yourself uh, other, if not, then I just continue asking the questions from, from the chat. Um, one follow-up question from the previous one is, how do you think to compete with G2, Gartner, Captera, um, and Product Hunter with OMR reviews? I mean, those companies are not existing in the German, they don't exist here. They, they are... Um... They are American companies. Some of them are active in India or something, but like the, 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 the standard German software buyer is not ready to like look at G2 and look at Captera. It's way too complex. It's, it's very, um, tailored for an American, for an English speaking audience. I understand the software is, is English as well. Um, but there's, there's, uh, in my mind, there's a clear need for like a, a, a trusted source out of Germany that tells them or like that, 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 that lends its credibility to the reviews that they're seeing, um, that, that, that sort of like, um, um, uh, translates what the product does into German. I, I'm sure many people have trouble understanding what all these products do exactly and how they differentiate and, and breaking this down in, 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 in words that everybody can understand, especially then in, in German words. Um, that, that is our edge. And these companies don't do that. They don't actually exist on the market. They don't try to, um, to, to win over software from Germany or from Europe. They don't try to like, they don't talk to, to, um, German marketing teams at software companies and they don't tailor, um, the, the German software buyer audience. And so, so I think I look at very closely what they do, but they leave this market open. And basically for me, it's, it's good old, uh, rocket days, we look at what they do, we try to do it better, we try to adapt it to the German market, and, and, and it really fits well to what we do at Orma. Okay, cool. And then the next question from the audience is, uh, do you have some suggestions, what is a good timing to reach out to happy or satisfied customers as uh, N26 did? Um, I, I mean, they, they um, you looked at, I, I think what they did is they looked at the NPS score, the Net Promoter score, and then whoever had a very high net promoter score above a certain a threshold and they reached out to those um, customers. But I think it's, it's not even necessary to like, if you don't have the NPS implemented, just reach out to everybody. I think that they, especially with banking, but it's, it's also true for other industries, only the people that are not happy, they leave negative reviews. And then they, and, and all the positive um, customers, 
they don't care. They just accept this as standard. Um, they don't take the time to write a positive remark. And you want to trigger them. You want to incentivize them. You want to like win them over. I think with the majority of the products, much, much more people like what you do or like are happy with the product, but they are silent. And you want to activate the silent majority that's actually happy with the product. And I think you don't even need to look at NPS or other indicators. Um, trust your product. Ask everybody, and you'll see that the, uh, the, 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 the majority usually, if you have a solid and, and, and positive product, is going to be happy, and it's going to leave you a positive review. It's not, I think it's, you don't have to like actually optimize there. Mm -hmm. Okay, and then a question from Marek. Uh, what are great examples of German brands founders leveraging TikTok um, and into which direction will TikTok develop? Um, it, uh, that, 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 I mean, obviously, some of this is, 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 is very hard to predict. And um, um, I, I mean, I, I recently noticed that, that TikTok is reaching out to all kinds of entrepreneurs, even to myself, to others, to see if they want to be um, more active on the platform. But I'm, the, only, the only area where I really notice um, people are playing TikTok well is, is German lawyers. Take a look at uh, the account of um, der, uh, Herr, Herr Anwalt. I think it's Herr Anwalt. Um, and that guy is basically like breaking down legal problems to the very basic questions that everybody has. Um, Who has to pay the prostitute if I, I don't know, if I happen to come too early? Really, like, really, really weird questions, but, like, very mass appealing, apparently. And he answers them, and millions of people care about that stuff. Um, and so he, like, really built a brand on TikTok for, as, 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 a, as, a, as a lawyer, as a, as a legal expert. Um, so um, that, that's an early example. But the, the, the general question, I think, is, is absolutely right, is, What does TikTok lead to? I mean, all we all we see in the past is whenever there's a new platform popping up, when there's Facebook coming, there's Google coming, there will be new businesses growing on top of this backbone. You've seen it with all the price comparison companies. Basically, there wouldn't be Zalando without Google, right? Um, and then you look at the Instagram wave. There's so many business, businesses that just wouldn't exist if Instagram wasn't there. There's... Um, all these beauty brands, all these food brands that are all over the place now, they just wouldn't exist without Instagram. And the question, the fashion brands, obviously there's brand new fashion brands um, that are basically existing because of the big backbone that, that Instagram is. So the question is, what type of businesses will be created because TikTok exists? Or what businesses will TikTok um, lead to? And that's a really good question. If you have an answer, if you ever have uh, any kind of idea that could be worth many millions, because then you can like maybe like build your business on, on the back of, of TikTok. My, my gut feeling is and has something to do with um, personal fitness and, um, and well-being. Because that's, I mean, if I look at TikTok, all I see is people doing... Um, doing tricks and doing interesting stuff with their bodies that you wouldn't believe are, are, are possible. And it's so much about you and your body and then being able to do stuff and being very um, uh, crafty with your with the with balls and, 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 I don't know, instru all kinds of, like, technical, like, physical challenges. And I, I would bet that this leads to something. But I can't tell you what. If, I, if I'd know, I'd, I don't know, be developing in that kind of business. Okay, cool. I'd like to follow up on that, but unfortunately, we have to uh, we have to uh, end the session. But um, thank you so much, Philip, for for joining us, and I hope you enjoyed uh, the pack one. Um, otherwise, yeah, uh, unfortunately, we're not going to have a wonder, but you can uh, see Philip on stage um, on the main stage. <laughs>